Ladies and gentlemen, this evening uh, we have with us a special guest, and uh, I'd like to introduce by May, Miss Alex Peterson. Alex uh, is an AMR student. She's our guest performer tonight, and she's 17 years old, and she's a grade 11 honor roll student at AMR. Alex works for the Niagara Public Health Department as a peer leader for the anti-tobacco group called REACT. She sings and plays piano and studies dance eight hours a week. In her spare time, Alex plays volleyball, softball, and is a competitive baton twirler. Alex aspires to, an, to work in international hum, relations and human rights one day and to speak for those who can't. Ms. Peterson enjoyed performing at the Hamilton Place in February and in Nash, Nashville, Tennessee last spring. After graduating from Meyer, she plans to study sociology and international affairs at university. Alex, welcome. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to point out uh, that that was an A. N. Meyer student, <laughs> and uh, some shameless self-promotion for the A. N. Meyer reunion. I'm sure you want to see her and a lot of other talented people at the reunion in two weeks. So, right, so April 27th to the 29th, go to the website. Great. Thank you, Your Worship. And on behalf of the members of council, I'd like to thank Alex for her attendance this evening. Mm -hmm. Alex, thank you very much for being with us. Great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Members of Council, the next uh, order of business is the adoption of the minutes of April 2nd, 2007, which you have before you. Moved by Councillor Fisher, seconded by Councillor Maves. Any discussion? <coughs> Having seen none, all those in favor? Motions carried, thank you. <coughs> Are there any disclosures of a pecuniary interest uh, by any members of council at this time? Okay, having seen none, we'll move to the next item on the agenda. The recognition of the Employee Excellence Awards. This evening we have a number of employees who will be honored under the under various categories of the city's uh, uh, recognizing the Employee Excellence Program. And I'm, at this time I'd like to call on our CAO, Mr. John McDonald. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a couple of introductory comments. Uh, I'm pleased tonight to be able to uh, be involved in this, the first time we've had that chance in the Open Council. City of Niagara Falls employs over 450 skilled and motivated people whose focus is on providing quality service on a daily basis. Often we do not take the time to recognize their commitment and outstanding service. To address this issue, we have implemented a new Employee Excellence Award Program. A committee representing cross-section of divisions was established to create a program that would recognize employees who go beyond the expectations of their jobs and demonstrate excellence in, in how they interact on behalf of the city. This program offers five different categories of recognition and leadership, customer service, team participation, innovation, and personal achievement. To be considered for an Employee Excellence Award, employees must be nominated by their peers or their supervisors. Since the inception of this program last year, uh, we have had re we've received dozens of nominations. And we're pleased to get the nominations and we acknowledge all of them with letters of appreciation. But this evening, we get a chance to recognize the first six employees 
who have been selected to receive Employee Excellence Awards. These employees are truly exceptional and have set the bar for future recipients. And what I'd like to do, I'm going to call each one of them to come up and, and you, Your Worship, if you could come around and um, we do have some awards to give. Uh, first, I'd like to ask uh, Luigi Fregali to come forward. Luigi is a carpenter with our Public Works uh, Department, uh, and he's receiving an award for outstanding in the innovations uh, uh, category. The corporation was looking for an efficient method to dispose of these and broken concrete light poles at a minimal cost. Luigi rose to the challenge and provided an innovative solution and suggested that these poles were crushed, the city tamper, eliminating the soles of cost and the crushed concrete reuse for city projects, providing a cost savings for the purchase of snow. Steel rebar was sold as scrap and provided a small source of revenue to the city. Um, in this case, uh, Luigi used a creative solution that was both cost effective and environmentally friendly. And that's why we asked, and that's why Luigi was nominated by his peers, and we'd like to present this work tonight. So thank you very much. <laughs> Next, I'd ask Colin Seymour to come forward, please. Tom Seymour is our plumber with our municipal works department, and he's received an employee action support for outstanding customer service. My own manager, Colin Seymour, is a problem solver. No matter the size or complexity of the task, Colin approaches each project proactively with an eye for innovation. A strong customer service orientation seems to come naturally to this former Olympic, Olympic rower, who has been lauded by those he has worked with and four, for his ex experience in the plumbing field and his professionalism. And as a result of that, in the way he approaches all the jobs and the way he approaches his clients, the many of us city employees of the public, uh, Colin has been nominated by his peers as a superior performer of quality service. And we appreciate that, Colin. <laughs> uh, William Clark. William Clark is a senior zoning administrator with our planning and development department, and he's received an employee excellence award for outstanding contributions and team participation. As a senior zoning administrator, Bill works with many internal and external customers in the corporation, providing direction and guidance on zoning related matters, preliminary in the area of development, primarily in the area of development. Bill is recognized as an invaluable member of the planning and development division team and as an asset to the work environment at City Hall. It contributes to the quality of work life by dealing with matters in an easygoing style, colloquial mannerisms, and those of us that work with him know what that means. Uh, humor, and best of all, is infectious laughter. It is these attributes that make Bill stand out as a critical component of our team at City Hall, and he's a major contributor to team participation in the work environment at City Hall, and we all appreciate that. Mike Pauley. Mike is a first class firefighter with their fire service, and his employee excellence award is for outstanding leadership and his contributions. In 2003, Mike approached fire administration with a plan to incorporate a fitness or wellness program with the fire department. He attended a one-week personal fitness trainer course offered through the International Association of Firefighters and the American Council on Exercise in his own time. Once completed, Mike offered his experience in providing fitness and wellness programming and employee skills on the recruitment class this year. Mike was among the founding members of the Niagara Falls Fire Combat Challenge Team and has played key roles in hosting regional and national events in Niagara Falls, bringing hundreds of competitors to the falls and creating significant economic impact for our city. Today, Fire Service has fitness trainers on each shift, and Mike continues to offer his assistance in fostering healthy lifestyles within the division.
Mike is an obvious leader and, 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 and a very strong component of our fire service, and we appreciate his contribution. Uh, Jim Jessup. Jim is uh, with uh, Fire Prevention Officer with Fire Service, and his Employee Excellence Award is also for leadership. Jim Jessup has become one of the most knowledgeable and respected fire prevention officers in Ontario with regard to prosecutions and court procedures for fire code violations. Jim's leadership came to the forefront over the past two years for his effort in leading a team of city staff in the prosecution of fire code offenses for marijuana and grow operations. Jim has shared his knowledge and experience with countless communities across Canada and has distinguished Niagara Falls as one of the foremost authorities in dealing with rural operations. Jim's initiative and hard work has resulted in making the city a safer place for emergency responders and our residents. And we appreciate Jim's initiative and his leadership in this regard. Thank you. <laughs> Serge Felicetti is our director of our business development uh, division, and he's also being recognized as a result of his leadership contributions. Serge's hard work and dedication always exceeds the expectations set in his job description and his endeavors to promote Niagara Falls as an outstanding city. Serge was responsible for live with Regis and Kelly coming to Niagara Falls in May 06. His efforts brought together the Niagara uh, Falls and Casino Resort, the Niagara Park Commission, the Ontario Ministry of Tourism, and the Canadian Tourism Commission with the City of Niagara Falls in a partnership to help fund the production of the show. And this was no easy task. Serge would be the first one to promote the event's success as a team effort. But without his drive to make the show a reality and the passion that he brings to all his work, the Niagara Falls shows could easily have failed as did similar attempts in other cities. The media exposure resulting from lives for Niagara Falls is estimated to have been worth in excess of three to four million dollars in the United States uh, in the United States market marketplace. Serge truly believes in the vision of our city as world class and constantly strives to encourage the rest of the world uh, to believe it through the events like this one. We appreciate the fact that this is a new program for us and these are the first six employees to be recognized and as I mentioned, uh, we've had a lot of nominations and, and these gentlemen are really going to set the bar going forward. We have our annual employee recognition meeting on April 26th and there will be a, a, another related presentation to these employees at that event, but we wanted to take the opportunity to uh, come to council and acknowledge them publicly and express our appreciation for their ongoing efforts. So the first six and, and to those that are setting the bar, thank you very much. Council, I'm sure that you'll join me in extending our congratulations to uh, these recipients. They make life for a better place, and it's nice to take the time to acknowledge uh, our employees for the service and humor they have to their jobs and to the citizens of Niagara Falls. Uh, Councillor Diodati, you want to make a comment? If you would, please? Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. I, I just wanted to um, echo my feelings that it's so important that you recognize when people do things good. It's so often that we uh, we hear about the negatives, we hear when things aren't good, and it's nice when we can uh, acknowledge and uh, honor the people when they do such a good job and and also I think it goes a long way to encouraging people there's the carrot and there's the stick and I often believe that the carrot is the way to go and you know as the saying goes happy cows make more milk and perhaps uh, yeah well I've always got to have a, a saying but the, the the belief behind it is the fact that when people are treated well they'll uh, they'll want to go to work and they'll want to do a good job and I think this is the way to go and I Fair want enough. to commend staff uh, our CAO on putting this program together and I think it's great and I look forward to having a lot more employees here in front of great. us. Great, I certainly appreciate that as well. Thank you.
<laughs> the next deputation, members of council, is a presentation from Heart Niagara. And this evening, our executive director of Heart Niagara, Karen Stern, is with us to address council on Heart Niagara's new partners uh, location and what they have to offer our community. Uh, welcome, Karen. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Good evening. Evening. Thank you, uh, Mayor and council and uh, friends of Heart Niagara and certainly our community. It's my pleasure tonight to uh, give you a good news story on what's happening at Heart Niagara. I, I know for some of you who know me, I've been pretty quiet for a few months, so it's a bit scary probably for most. <laughs> However, so we're back and we wanted to really share with you things that are going on. First of all, I'd like to uh, certainly announce that uh, this is our 30th year. Our official um, date will be September 28th, however, so uh, we're closing 30 quickly. And uh, so at this point, we have provided services in Niagara for over 29 years, and the City of Niagara Falls has been instrumental in that happening. As many of you may know, Heart Niagara's uh, mission remains the same, and that is to provide training and treatment for the prevention of cardiovascular disease uh, through health promotion, public education, rehabilitation, uh, cardiovascular risk management to the citizens and health professionals in Niagara. We've continued to do this under the leadership, and uh, I, you'll find out now that I don't know technically. Somehow I figured this slide, and I didn't do this on purpose, but Stafford Dobbins' name seemed to have come up all by itself. And as you know, uh, Stafford has been responsible for really providing the leadership, so there must be something going on there under the slide. Uh, he remains the head of our Niagara Schools program. Uh, and our board this year is uh, George Zemakis, John Carter, uh, John Kinane, Mary Fickle, Mary Catherine Lindbergh, Carol Maidens, myself, uh, Ellen Watches, and uh, Doug Monkey remains our past chair. So uh, certainly we have uh, experience behind us. And we continue to provide those services uh, through health promotion, as you've seen. And uh, this could not happen without program development. And that only happens with collaboration from our partners, both uh, provincially, regionally, and of course municipally. This could not happen, and we would not improve residents' health without that help. We have offices located uh, in Niagara Falls at the Allied Health Center, which is located behind GNJH. Uh, and also we have space, uh, thanks to the city, at the McBain Community Center. And we do provide services in all 12 municipalities. Uh, I just, uh, this really gives you an idea of how broad the um, partnerships we have in Niagara, and this could not happen. The services we deliver and the lives we touch annually are really due in part to every group on that uh, list. And uh, I guess one of our signature programs, many of you may know, since 1987, uh, we have been delivering a school's Healthy Heart program. Uh, we deliver this program in 30 high schools right now and see over 5,000 students every year twice. And we also send information home to their families twice. And that uh, uh, is really the one opportunity we have to reach the whole population. Uh, and this is how it's done. This program was designed to really uh, get adolescents to understand that their height, their weight, their blood pressure, and their cholesterol, and that finger prick of blood that comes out tells a story, and their family history, you really can't pick your parents. And we take a look at their risk review and talk to them about making healthy decisions that will impact their whole life. Uh, we finished that program off with bystander CPR because as a community uh, we certainly want to support emergency services and bystander CPR is critical uh, to survival as many of you know and in Niagara Falls we've certainly had great cases to prove that lately. Uh, so we continue to do that. So that is over 5,000 students every year taught. Uh, CPR. We do that in partnership with the Public Health Department and the Youth Connection Nurses and each of the school boards. This is probably the largest schools program, if uh, not in Canada, in North America. Nobody has access to students how we do, and I think that is certainly a tribute to uh, the foundation that has been built over the last 30 years and the work we do. In 2003, we uh, added on and we built an elementary bystander CPR program and that is a program that is offered in grade seven and grade eight, and it is a random program offered to schools, and we continue to do that. And it is the community, again, who supports this program and funds it. The next piece for us is a program called Family and Friends CPR Anytime, and that is a concept that has been proven to work, that if you can actually put the teaching tools in the hands of those grade seven students, they'll go home and teach their parents and their brothers and sisters. So for every two student we teach, three more will be taught. Uh, so this is a bright future for us, and that just gives you an idea of some of the kids that we're seeing. 
Uh, you may, many of you may have seen, certainly from Council, you would have received uh, in a package a lovely red folder a few weeks ago. Uh, it was really uh, with a DVD and I brought extra for anybody here. I think that as a community uh, we have a responsibility and that is one of the things we know is there is not enough fitness going on, although we had great signs of it so far tonight. Uh, and one of the things is that we need to send a strong message to the Minister of Education that they need to increase the amount of uh, credit, second credit for phys ed in high schools. And that DVD is a uh, five minute uh, presentation that is being showed uh, provincially. And right now we're um, working on a petition, and I'm not led by me, by the way, uh, that really uh, talks to this issue and uh, directs the Minister of Education to include phys ed as a second credit in high school. I don't know how we continue to tell our kids to be active, but tell them it's not important enough to include it in their education. So uh, please, if you've got the time, go to the website or uh, grab a DVD, take a look at it, and certainly send a uh, note to the Minister of Education. If you go to the website, there's a direct link. So that's just my pitch. Uh, cardiovascular risk management, as uh, uh, for 30 years, Heart Niagara has recognized the need in this community uh, to work with high-risk clients and those with uh, primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease. And we continue to do that through workplaces and in community forums. This particular forum was uh, in February. It was called Fit for the Future. And that day we offered uh, cardiovascular counseling, cholesterol testing, and blood pressure to over 200 residents. Uh, and we continue to do that on a regular basis. We also work with our partners at the YMCA, at the McBain Community Center, to offer people access to uh, activity on a weekly basis. Certainly smoke cessation remains a, a key point in Niagara and people need help to stay quick uh, and Heart Niagara offers that service in partnership with the region of Niagara. Cooking for a Healthier You is a program that we do with our partners in Niagara, giving people the opportunity to uh, find out that uh, you don't have to be healthy by eating just twigs. There's a few other things that you can be added into it, and uh, Cooking for a Healthier You is an opportunity that we do in workplaces and come out and talk to people about making uh, some changes. The community partnerships, many of you may have seen Niagara on the move over the last 15 months. That was made possible through a grant from the Ministry of Health Promotion. And we started that with a kit, and it was a pedometer kit to get people active. So uh, we certainly, that program now goes into its second year. There has been a no announcement for funding. However, Heart Niagara feels strongly enough about this that we will continue to work with the community to make sure this happens and find funding. The chain of survival remains key. That was the actual reason that Heart Niagara was started back in 1977 was to support uh, the development of 911 and to establish training for medical personnel in Niagara and we continue to do that after 30 years. Physician recruitment is something that uh, Heart Niagara got involved with in, in uh, 2004. One of our partners is the region of Niagara. They actually fund Heart Niagara to deliver the family medicine program in Niagara. And also Heart Niagara works directly with the city of Niagara Falls to work uh, to increase family practice medicine here in Niagara. Uh, all of these, uh, these, both of these programs are funded completely through the region and the city of Niagara Falls. CPR remains uh, key, as I said. And uh, we have successfully uh, trained over 45,000 individuals in CPR. And we continue to be committed to developing a broader bystander CPR program so that we increase preparedness in Niagara. The public access DFib program certainly has gotten lots of play, and uh, Niagara has uh, received lots of. Uh, Encouraging signs, as you know, uh, back in 2000 when I first uh, approached everyone to uh, place defibrillators in our arenas, uh, we had only hoped that we would have the success we have, and certainly the outcomes because of the staff and the donors in Niagara has been incredible, and we continue to work on this program. Uh, right now, uh, that, of course, as you know, sudden cardiac arrest can happen to anyone, anywhere, and we've seen it across uh, the locations. Uh, Niagara Falls uh, certainly provided leadership again in that program, and I'm happy to say that at this point we have 72 workplaces and over 100 defibrillators placed in Niagara, and in the next, um, I would say within the next 12 weeks, we will probably be placing another 25 units. So people are starting to understand that this is key, and it could be your neighbor or your friend that is saved, uh, so that we certainly need to do that, and Niagara Falls has been a leader in making that happen for us. 
Of course, Heart Niagara uh, raises money through the community. Uh, the first event we have this year is uh, actually a community event, but we are the recipients, so I, I really wanted to talk about that, and it's called Two Hearts in Motion. For many of you, you may have remembered Dave Speck years ago, a great friend of Niagara, and his son also, both passed away tragically. Uh, their uh, His uh, wife, Mary, and their daughter came to Heart Niagara last year and said they wanted to do something, and they wanted to make a difference, and they have a fun night and it will be this year at Our Lady of Peace. And all the dollars they raise are invested in elementary school CPR, bystander CPR programs, so that we can go further. And that is a real commitment this family has made. That was the first family fund that was established at Heart Niagara, and they continue to work towards that to deliver elementary CPR programming. Of course, the Vineyard Cycle Tour, which has always been a key um, event for Heart Niagara, and that has been made possible because of uh, the City of Niagara Falls. The support from staff and uh, from council has been uh, insurmountable over the last eight years. We could not have done it without you, and we continue to work on that program. Our fourth annual Lobster Fest, nobody can be against lobster, it seems. And we have, uh, it's an event we hold at Our Lady of Peace uh, Hall, and uh, we uh, actually lock the tickets off at 250. We don't want it to be very big, uh, just because we can't cook anymore. And uh, so we are able to do this because of the Rotary Club. They come out that night and help us, and to Rotary, uh, again, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you. You'll notice in your package that you all got a lovely uh, Niagara on the Move journal tonight, and I've got some extra here. So we have the Flying Chicken 5 and 10K run, and we have a 5K walk in August. So you've all got lots of time to track your steps so that you can come out and walk with us or run. Uh, this is uh, an adult event. Uh, it is on uh, Saturday, August the 18th. We have it on the farm, so this should be good for Jim since every analogy tonight was around farming, so uh, <laughs> I'm sure you'll be out. Uh, this is a chicken farm, and uh, we have a 5K, a 10K run, and a 5K walk, and uh, it comes with a great buffet. We have a couple of bands, and there might even be a bar. So consider that as a night out. Uh, and then we have our Hearts in Motion Golf Tournament. And, uh, and uh, uh, the one thing that I did want to share with you, but I will come back formally, and that is on uh, November the 3rd, we will be hosting our 30th anniversary gala, and I'll come back to talk to you more about that. We, we will be honoring people in our community who have made a difference over the last 30 years, and certainly uh, we hope the city to be a major part of that. Along with that, as you know, we continue to receive donations in memoriams. Uh, service clubs, Heart Niagara could not have survived over these years without service clubs in Niagara. The Branscombe Family Foundation, the Ministry of Health has always provided us for nearly 10 years now, uh, pardon me, 8 years now with a nurse practitioner. The Ministry of Health promotion for our Niagara on the move. The medical community has always come out to support us. We continue to have proposals. So, of course, I know you thought I was coming here not to ask for anything tonight, but that just wouldn't be true. Uh, Vineyard Cycle Tour is May 27th, and as a council, you have endorsed this for the last eight years. You certainly, as a council, have gotten behind it. Uh, you have at least one team come out, uh, between 10 and 20 uh, people come out to join us that day. And the, citizen, uh, the city uses a lot of resources to make that day happen. So again, this year, I'm requesting uh, support in uh, whatever level you... Uh, Dean, and if you don't, then I'll just ask through the back door. So <laughs> we continue to, uh, as I said, this this event could not happen without your support, and it raises about forty-five thousand dollars a year, which uh, uh, is directly uh, distributed within the school system, so that we make sure that uh, more kids are tested for cholesterol and their blood pressure is checked. So uh, without your support, this would not be possible. This is our 30th anniversary, as I said, and I wouldn't be right. Uh, Stafford is not here with me tonight, but he, for some of you, uh, as you know, uh, 2006 may not uh, probably be a banner year in our history. However, this is not the end. It is merely just the beginning of the end. So, uh, or the end of the beginning. That's what it is. I better say that right, Winston Churchill. So we just wanted to uh, come tonight to share with you what we're doing that we're alive and well, and uh, uh, we have uh, about eight full-time staff and about 30 contract staff, and so uh, we're here to deliver services in our community. Thank you. Karen, thank you very much. There may be questions from members of council. Members of council, do you have any questions of Karen Stern this evening? Yes, uh, Council Maves. Well, I'd be interested to know uh, these de 
defibrillators? Yes. yes. Now, what is the cost of one of those? Uh, right now, they're about uh, $3,000. 3000 And uh, then uh, what you would do is uh, uh, often any places uh, buy a cabinet. It's a metal cabinet that it sits in, and it would go into your alarm system, or there is just a storage uh, container that it can go in. It's about $3,000, though, and then Hart Niagara will come in and uh, work with your staff. Uh, and in Niagara Falls, we link directly with the fire services to do the training. Yes, Councilor Peter Angelo. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, I thank Mrs. Stern for coming here today and giving us a presentation. I know that we've always supported Hart Niagara in the uh, in the Vineyard Cycle Tour, and I know that Mr. McDonald has always uh, uh, participated as well. So I'm wondering if he would be interested in heading up a team, and uh, I would make the motion anyway, Your Worship, that we enter a team. I think he's already done so. Mr. McDonald. I appreciate the encouragement. We we have actually putting a team together right now, and we will be participating again this year. We always do support it, and I appreciate the support from the members of council. Uh, any other comments from members of council? I'd like to thank you, Karen, uh, for making Niagara a safer place and a better place and a healthier place, and your commitment and certainly your staff, if you convey to your staff uh, our appreciation for what you do on behalf of all the citizens of Niagara Falls. We appreciate you taking your time uh, this evening with us to share the facts that Niagara, and Heart Niagara is still alive and well, so you're providing a lot of programs and a lot of different venues, and we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. This time, uh, members of council would ask the city clerk to introduce the next item on the agenda. A public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city's zoning bylaw for a proposed cottage rental dwelling at 9268 Lundy's Lane. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on Friday, March 16, 2007, and by posting a sign on the property in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passage of the zoning bylaw amendment or to participate in any site plan process, if applicable, shall leave their name on the sign in sheets outside the council chamber. Thank you very much. And this time I'm going to ask the director of planning to explain the purpose and the reason for the proposed bylaw amendment. Uh, Mr. Darvison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. The applicant from this evening is Kenneth Moore, and uh, he originally came to council with an application, but that would matter was deferred at his request. The uh, subject lands are located at Lundy's Lane. This is the subject property. Across the street is the Camp Park Resorts, and the golf course is to the south. Uh, the next slide will show you uh, an aerial of the uh, proposed pro of the property in question. Uh, it's outlined in black. Uh, there's undeveloped lands to the west and a, a single house uh, to the east. The proposed application uh, tonight is to request a single family uh, det uh, detached dwelling to be used as a uh, dwelling, a rental dwelling unit for uh, tourists. There's a total of four rooms in the proposed uh, single family home. And uh, this, uh, app, uh, this application is, is, is has to be considered tonight. And for a point of information, in 2004, the applicant did receive approval for two other cottage rental dwellings, and they're both located on Garner Road. In terms of uh, official plan, the property is designated for good general agricultural purposes. This designation permits uh, uses such as forestry, agriculture, and conservation. Bed and breakfast accommodations may be permitted through site-specific bylaw amendments, as Council has done many times in the past. And a cottage rental dwelling is an alternative form of accommodation which is similar in scale and use to a BFB. In terms of the proposed cottage rental dwelling unit, it conforms to the official plan in a variety of ways. Uh, the use is, uh, the current house is four bedrooms. Uh, given that it's a small scale, it will be similar uh, to a bed and breakfast that may be permitted by zoning amendment. The dwelling will be continued to be used for housing. The only difference would be that the occupancy will be on a shorter duration. The cottage rental the dwelling use will not impact uh, existing farm oper operations, and the use complies with ministry setbacks for agricultural operations. The dwelling unit to the east is well separated from the proposed end use and is not expected to be impacted. In terms of zoning, this property is zoned for agricultural purposes. The zoning is requested to be amended site specifically to permit this proposed use. No expansion of the use is contemplated. The city has received complaints about the noise and the behavior of occupants in the other cottage rental dwellings. And this might be uh, uh, attributed to the occupancy. Uh, although occupancy cannot directly be controlled through zoning, occupancy can be controlled through property standards, bylaw, and the tariff building code. 
and the standard uh, generally is two persons per bedroom. To ensure that the use is kept at a level compatible with the surrounding residences and consistent with the scale of B&Bs, the cottage rental dwelling should be limited to the existing four bedrooms with no expansion permitted. And a licensing bylaw could also be used to limit occupancy if that's so is required. It's our conclusion, based on our assessment of the application, that the, uh, the, the development can be supported for the following reasons. The use is similar to a bed and breakfast facility, which may be admitted in the agricultural designation. And we think that the use will be complementary to the surrounding tourist, commercial, and open space uses, and is well set back, set back from nearby residential dwellings. <coughs> Provided the rental dwelling is limited to uh, the existing dwelling and to four bedrooms, we think that the use will be compatible with the surrounding property. It's our recommendation this evening that council support the application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Garberson. Members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting could result in the Ontario Municipal Board uh, dismissing any referral that it receives if the party has not made an oral or written submission at this public meeting. Council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak to this proposed bylaw amendment other than the applicant? Please come forward. And for the record, if you'd be kind enough to state your name and address, please. Welcome. Donna Mino, 6101 Garner Road, Niagara Falls. Mayor Selsey, Councillor and City of Niagara Falls, City, the Councillors of the City of Niagara Falls and City staff. Um, I just want to start out by saying that the reason Ken Moore is, is uh, coming before you tonight is because he once again was caught for non-conformance of city bylaws. Most of you on council know me because I have been here many times since the summer of 2003 with regards to Ken Moore and Niagara Falls Golf Course issues. Um, my backyard abuts the Niagara Falls Golf Course and every time that I have to come here it's because Ken Moore has not conformed to the laws of the city and I have to issue complaints. And then he has to then apply for zoning amendments. The Cudlucks and Minos have spent thousands in legal fees with regards to these issues. And I just want to update for the new councillors that uh, some of the, the list of issues that have been addressed. Um, Ken Moore built an addition to the clubhouse with no uh, building permit. He got a pat on the back because he's a nice guy. He opened up two houses to short-term tenants. He was forced to rezone to cottage rental dwellings. He added additions and bathrooms to the two cottage rental at rentals including connecting a barn to the house without a per permit. He got a slap on the wrist. Anybody else in the city would have been forced to take it down. He clear cut the forest behind our house. He was given a thousand dollar fine and ordered to plant some trees. He built the land up behind my house once below our land level to above our land level. The city and the, develop and the new developer have recently paid for the appropriate drainage from Garner Road to Shriners Creek. He opened an entrance for a truck stop to Highway 20 without approval. The region had to come down to get them to cease. He developed a driving range behind my house. He was forced into a site plan agreement. He put up lights behind my house. He was forced to take them down. He built a thousand square, uh, I mean, sorry, a hundred square foot pad from the driving range, close to, range too close to our property. The portion had to be removed. And he was burning creel that was smoldering for days from hydro poles, and he was forced to cease. Um, this brings us to the latest. Last year in the spring, I, told, I was told that Ken Moore had bought, bought the Baldwin Alley residence on uh, Lundy's Lane, that he had moved in 19 beds and started another cottage rental, even offering cart service back and forth from the house to the golf course. I informed City Hall that Ken was once again up to non-conforming to city bylaws. Staff called me back and told me that Ken, Ken Moore said he bought the house for his son and his son had lots of friends. End of story. They told me to get proof. I knew eventually I would. In the September 27, 2006 issue of Four Golfers News, there was a two-page story on Niagara Falls Golf Club and he was boasting about his new cottage rental off the first tee. I had the proof. I forwarded the proof along with a scanned copy of the article to the mayor, councillors and staff. Ken was forced to cease to operate. Now that is why he's here tonight. Ken Moore is a City of Niagara Falls employee who keeps disrespect in the city's laws and is here for a zoning bylaw amendment. I have left calls with Mr. Castelli and I asked Andrew to answer some questions of which I have yet to be answered. Question number one has to do with MPD 2007-13 that was, was in the March Council package before it was deferred. There was a paragraph that was omitted this time around. It states, 
To ensure the dwelling is used at a level consistent with that of a bed and breakfast accommodation, the occupancy should be limited. Recently, cottage rental dwellings in the city have been limited to an occupancy of 10 persons, a standard based on regulations established in Niagara on the Lake. The question I had is, is this true for the city of Niagara Falls? Is there a 10 person limit to cottage rentals? Number two, in PD 20724, it states, although occupancy cannot be directly controlled by the zoning bylaw, occupancy can be controlled through the city's property standards bylaw in the Ontario Building Code, which limits occupancy to two persons per bedroom, similar to that of other recently approved cottage rental dwellings. This building before us tonight is seven buildings. I want to be ensured that that means that this cottage rental dwelling will be limited to eight people maximum. Since the city's property standards and bylaws in the Ontario Building Code were written before the other cottage rentals were allowed by council, do the other two cottage rentals have the same maximum occupancy limits? Uh, the, I, on the website for um, Niagara Falls Golf Club, 6241 Garner Road, and 6395 Gardner Road um, advertise that they have seven bedrooms each. So I want to know, does that mean they're allowed two people per bedroom, which is 14? Does the 10 apply? What does it mean? Um, the city staff have not answered my questions, and I would like answers to those questions. Um, I have some Niagara Falls Golf Club ads. And one of them states that the executive golf residence at 6395 can accommodate up to 30 people. It only has seven bedrooms. And the cottage golf residence can accommodate up to 20, and it only has seven bedrooms. Um, it also states on their website that in-season weekend on-site cottage require a minimum of 12 golfers. Um, I included a letter in today's package that states the issues we have experienced in over the last couple of years with the renters to these cottages. There's no, there's no need for me to repeat those. The noise issues don't just happen once in a while. They, ha they happen almost every weekend and on some weeknights. The only nights we seem to get a break is when it rains. Um, there were two new letters of support in this package that weren't in the March package. Um, because I was referred to in those letters, I just want to make a, say a few words about them. Mr. Bocamp at 6412 Garner Road states that there are signs posted. I've never been in the houses, so I haven't seen the signs. Um, I drove past Mr. Bocamp's house this morning. I noticed that the house doesn't start until after the front door of the cottage rental, so he would have he would not have the same noise issues as as us of people walking past his house. And since the building blocks the noise as he states, and he should have no issues. Many times I've driven by that house in the daytime and the self-closing doors are propped wide open with men playing pool inside and groups of men drinking in the parking lot. Mr. Bolkamp seems more concerned for the new subdivision, but that planning meeting happened last year. He should have expressed those concerns at that planning meeting. Regar regarding the work that was completed beside and in front of my house recently in partnership with the new developer in the city of Niagara Falls, they did a professional job and I'm very happy with the work. This is the first time since Ken raised the height of the property behind my house that I have not had a water issue in the spring. They also did it at a time of year where the ground was frozen a wet, which minimized the dust. I would never complain about progress. Sure, the roads beat up and it will take a, to be, be taken care of once it dries up. It has, has been too wet for any real issues for us except for some garbage left behind. The road will have to be fixed sooner than later, but at least people are slowing down and not exceeding the speed limit for once. A Mr. Volcant can be rest assured that we will be the first to complete if the dust flies, but he better hold on to his hat because I have an email from August of 2003 to the then, to the then Mayor Wayne Thompson asking for the road to be fixed, and it hasn't been done yet. Mr. Ayala, who is my neighbor, also submitted a letter of support, and of course he should have noise, noise issues as his family has a trailer on the beach and he's there every weekend in the summer, and I know that for a fact because it's a couple trailers down from my sister's. Again, he has the same issues with the new development that went before council and was approved last year. Um, and I do know that he's getting net netting now, double the size of our height as the golf ball from the driving range shattered the skylight on his house. Mr. Moore does not follow the laws or the rules of the city. We are asking you to carefully go through Mr. Moore's practices of the past and take that into consideration when making your decision. Also, please take into consideration what the residents of Garner Road are going through with the current conditions. We do deserve the quiet enjoyment of our homes. 
you do not allow, if you do allow this cottage rental to go through, it must be limited to a set number of guests. I would agree with the two persons per bedroom limit, but it has to somehow be enforced and be applied to all cottage rental dwellings in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Minor. We'll attempt to get some of your questions answered. Uh, Mr. Darbison, uh, Mrs. Minor had some questions with regard to occupancy. Can you uh, reaffirm uh, the position of uh, of the occupancy load in the premises? Thank you. Uh, the last several uh, proposals, the staff have making, been making recommendations about limitations of uh, cottage rental dwelling units uh, in terms of bedrooms. Um, all of our reports basically talk about up to four bedrooms, similar to a bed and breakfast facility that we do permit uh, as a right in the city. Uh, therefore, uh, the, and the property standards bylaw does indicate two uh, persons per bedroom is or uh, the standard uh, based on that minimum uh, uh, property standards bylaw. There's also information in the interior uh, building code with respect to uh, that type of occupancy. Uh, therefore, anyone, any development that we're recommending from here on in, or even uh, many ones in the past, we've always made a recommendation about the number of bedroom counts. In our report, we did address the fact that we could not regulate occupancy by through zoning. That's something that we can't do, uh, but we certainly could do it through property standards. Now, with respect to uh, other ones uh, that were approved in the past, uh, we did not make any recommendations regarding uh, expansions of those units, uh, the number of bedrooms, and so forth. Therefore, uh, those, mat those uh, matters, those uh, facilities, we need to be looked at by staff in greater detail to see what kind of controls uh, we could do after the fact. Uh, but that zone, those zonings went through without those kinds of limitations to them. So there is something there that we will need to investigate further. But uh, to reiterate, all of the recommendations to CMA, for example, are all uh, based on limiting the, the occupancy to uh, four bedrooms, two persons per bedroom. And Mr. Darbison, possibly we can ask our fire chief if there's any regulations with regard to the Ontario Fire Marshal's office with respect to, to load in the building. Is there anything you can offer, a Chief, with respect to the occupancy of, of a building? There, uh, there are occupancy requirements for different uh, uh, ways that the buildings can be occupied, depending on whether they're considered single-family dwellings, uh, um, bed and breakfast, uh, or even rooming lodging. And so we're currently working with planning and with building with legal to uh, to devise a way to absolutely uh, deter make determinations of their their use and how uh, those codes, the building code and fire code, are applied to those. Thank you. Is there anyone else other than the applicant who wishes to address this matter with respect to the proposed bylaw amendment? No? Comments from Council? Councillor Thompson? Yeah, just through you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, is there not a, uh, uh, through the uh, Health Department, or I think even through the Building Code now, a uh, 600 cubic square uh, cubic feet of uh, space per person. Uh, you said two people in the bedroom, uh, and you have uh, a 20 foot uh, by 20 foot room. Uh, that's a, a little different than uh, having a normal bedroom. Uh, in my experience uh, with the health department, there used to be a square footage that was set uh, per person. Is that not in effect? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Having? Smith. Yes, Mr. Smith. Chief, do you have any knowledge of that? Um, generally, we look at the, the uh, number of bedrooms, and we, we go by the two person per bedroom in most cases as well. There's nothing really that uh, indicates uh, um, the, uh, the number of people per bedroom other than that for uh, purposes of occupant load. Maybe you should check with the health department or the building code because I think there's something in there. Okay. Any other comments at this point from members of council? No. At this time, then, we'll ask for uh, the applicant or his representative to come forward, please. Mr. Sinclair, welcome. Thank you, members of council. It's nice to, nice to be here. I haven't been here in a long time. And, uh, I'd just like to say that uh, the report that Andrew Bryce, I think he prepared it for and what Dr. Darkison uh, presented to council, we concur with it. I think it uh, sets up the facts on this particular situation. I would also say that it's a very large piece of property. It's 2.1 acres, about 275 foot, 375 feet deep. Um, to the immediate north, you've got the Tam Park, Peter Van Cleef owns that, and he is uh, supporting this application. Also to the Immediate east is Mrs. Risdale. Uh, she has supported this application. They're all within 400 feet. 
And then you've got the motel, the Kingsway Motel, and that person that owns the Kingsway is supporting this application as well. I think that's rather important because, and then to the west, of course, you've got farmland. So there's no problem. So this is a long way, a long way from Garner Road, actually, a long way from anything. And I think this is an ideal, ideal location. Um, it's uh, certainly it meets the official plan. It's compatible. It's uh, it's the right uh, it's the right occupancy. And this is this is the perfect location for it. As far as uh, um, we're concerned, obviously my client is concerned about noise, and he has uh, uh, got vouchers for the tax-free taxi, which he'll supply to this particular thing. So we won't get people walking around making a lot of noise. We're going to try to avoid that. He's certainly working on it and certainly cognizant of the, of the situation. Um, I think this is a good application. I'm prepared to answer any questions you have, but I think it makes sense. Are there any questions by members of council of the applicant solicitor? <coughs> Councilor Thompson? Yes, sir, you, uh, Your Worship, uh, you mentioned vouchers. Are, are you suggesting that uh, they're going to provide vouchers yes. or taxis yes. to take the people back and forth, which is right. causing some of the problems? That's right. That would eliminate the noise problem where they're walking down the street. Making some noise and so forth. Okay. okay. Any other comments or questions of the applicant solicitor? Yes, the Councillor Wing. I'm wondering why this cottage rental went into operation without having the proper zoning and permits in place. Well, I, th I think it, I think originally, it's my understanding, I, I really don't know exactly, but I understand originally uh, his son was was occupying. It. He, was, he was just simply renting the, renting the house out, or giving it giving it probably to his son. Uh, but it sort of maybe developed into a, a rental situation. I'm not exactly sure. I really can't answer the question too well. Your, your client had two cottage rental dwellings approved at that time. So I assume he was aware that uh, there were certain approvals that needed to be in place before this took place. And yet he didn't bother. Well, that could be the case, but I think that he sort of worked into it. Like he. Uh, Originally, it was going to be rented out to his son, and it got a little bit more than that, obviously, I think. Yeah, I, you know, I recall seeing the article in uh, Four Golfers magazine about the third cottage rental. Uh, you know, you would think that being the operator of two cottage rentals, before you go publicizing the fact that you have a third one in operation, you would get the proper... I suppose, I suppose one thing to consider is the fact that in a rural area like this, uh, a, uh, you're allowed to have a, uh, um, a, not a uh, bed and breakfast, okay? And this is similar to a bed and breakfast, so it's, it's really questionable whether it's not really totally illegal because a bed and breakfast is you can really have in a rural area. So, and it's a, it's a residence, uh, it's a house, it's out, out in the country. I think it's. It's sort of understandable that he would do it because it's really isolated. You know, I, my impression is having dealt with this back in 2003, because I've been involved from the summer of 2003 on, is that this is a case where it's deemed a lot easier to ask forgiveness than to ask permission. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ryan Lee. Thank you. I'm not going to ask Mr. Sinclair the questions. He's paid to be here and represent his client. I mean, you're doing the job you're paid for. I will say this. There's got to be some standard we have when you have a habitual uh, person who breaks the rules every time. I think it's even more offensive when we just had a presentation to our employees for good service. We have a firefighter who continually breaks the rules in regards to permits, gets his hand slapped every time so that Janice and I can stand up here and say the same thing. He doesn't follow the rules. You know, I hope for Ms. Mino's sake that we can enforce some sort of occupancy um, restriction because their lives have not been made any happier with Mr. Moore's development back there. And quite frankly, I think he should be ashamed of himself. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from members of council? Are there any further comments from members of the public who are here present tonight with regard to the, or any clarification with regard to the proposed amendment? <coughs> okay. Having seen none, then the public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. Pleasure of Council. Uh, Council Fisher moves the recommendation seconded by Council Thompson. Any discussion to the motion? Having seen none, all those in favor, please hold your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Opposed? Two. The motion is carried. Thank you very much.
Mr. Clerk, could you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? A public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city zoning bylaw to permit a proposed cottage rental dwelling at 5057 River Road. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on Friday, March 16, 2007, and by posting a sign on the property in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passage of the zoning bylaw amendment or to participate in any safe plan process if applicable shall leave their name on the sign in sheets outside the council chamber. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. At this time, once again, I'm going to ask the director of planning to explain the purpose and the reason for the proposed bylaw amendment. So, Mr. Darberson. Yes. Uh, second application this evening is uh, the owner, Mr. James Craig. This is a proposed property uh, uh, with respect to the zoning application. The uh, property has frontage on River Road, and it's within the uh, River Road Satellite District. This is a site plan for the property. Uh, uh, it contains a single family house and a two car garage. There's no changes to the, uh, to the property with respect to this rezoning. Uh, the application is to prevent an existing dwelling to be used as a cottage uh, rental dwelling for tourists. Now, in this area of the city, the city uh, permits bed and breakfast facilities as of right. Uh, that means that you don't have to have zoning approval to get bed and breakfast facilities. But they are limited to uh, four bedrooms. Uh, the proposed application this evening is six bedrooms. In terms of the official plan, the, the area is designated for residential purposes. It's in uh, the River Road Satellite District, which I've indicated permits bed and breakfast facilities up to four bedrooms for, for guests. A cottage rental dwelling, uh, these kinds of uh, additional forms of tourist accommodation have been, permit, been permitted in this district where uh, council has considered them compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. In terms of the official plan policies, uh, cottage uh, rental dwellings uh, are an alternative form of accommodation which are similar to B&B facilities. Dwellings will continue to be used for housing, only the occupancy will be of a shorter duration. Uh, I've indicated before that no changes are proposed for the, for the property, therefore the residential character of the area will be maintained. There's no additional traffic will be generated uh, compared to a single family home. And provided the number of bedrooms are limited to the four, the scale should be compatible with the surrounding residences. In terms of zoning, this is a special uh, single family and two family zone which does permit uh, bed and breakfast facilities. The current zoning applies to the entire area from the central business district right down to the tourist area. It's all one large residential district, and they all do permit tourist accommodations in this small scale form. To ensure that this cottage rental dwelling is compatible with the surrounding uses and consistent with the scale of BNBs, the dwelling uh, should be limited to four bedrooms, which will mean <coughs> two bedrooms in the basement will, uh, should not be used for accommodating additional guests. To ensure fire safety, an inspection is required by fire services to ensure that the, uh, there is conformity with the fire state safety standards prior to the passage of the amending zoning bylaw. It's our conclusion that the proposed dwelling uh, unit can be supported in that it complies with the official plan policies for small scale accommodations. Uh, the residential uh, nature uh, of the dwelling uh, the will be uh, similar in scale to all the uses contemplated in the neighborhood. And the uses are, of course, similar to bed and breakfast facilities. Provided that the rental dwelling is limited to four bedrooms, the use will be compatible with the budding properties. It's our recommendation this evening that the application be approved with that limitation to four bedrooms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Garbison. Uh, once again, members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral written submission at this public meeting could result in the Ontario Municipal Board dismissing any referral that it receives if the party has not made an oral written submission at this public meeting. Council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Is there anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak? Is there anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak? Having seen none at this time, then Council will hear from the applicant or his or her representative. And welcome, and for the record, you please be kind enough to state your name and address, please. My name is uh, Trudy Richard, and my address is P.O. Box 354, St. David's, Ontario. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. 
and my husband and I have been the property manager for um, Mr. Craig's other cottage rentals. And I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> if you would like to ask me a question, I'd be happy to try Certainly. and answer it. Certainly. I appreciate that. Are there any questions of members of council, uh, Mrs. Richards? No? I guess we're fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. At this point, then, will the, uh, the meeting with regard to the proposed uh, by zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. Pleasure of council. Councilor Thompson, moved by Councilor Thompson, seconded by Councilor Cario. Any discussion to the motion? Having seen none, all those in favor? The motion is carried. Mr. Clerk, could you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? A public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city zoning bylaw to permit a proposed cottage rental dwelling at 4339 Banfield Street. Notice was given by First Class Mail in accordance with the Planning Act on Friday, March 16, 2007, and by posting a sign on the property in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passage of the zoning bylaw or to participate in any site plan process, if applicable, shall leave their name on the sign issue to upset the council meeting. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Once again, I'm going to call the Planning Director to explain the purpose and the reason for the proposed bylaw amendment. Mr. Darverson. Mr. Mayor, members of council, this is exactly the same applicant, uh, the house around the corner from the uh, last application that was approved. This particular house has three bedrooms. It's the same analysis. Uh, the use complies with the official plan, provided that the bedroom counts are limited as, as to the proposal. We don't think that the development would be incompatible and it would be consistent with the bed and breakfast facilities in the neighborhood. It is our conclusion and recommendation this evening, very similar to the last one, Mr. Mayor, that this application should be supported for the same reasons that the last application was. Thank you. Thank you again. And once again, members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting could result in the Interior Municipal Board dismissing any referral that it receives if the party has not made an oral or written submission at this public meeting. At this time, again, Council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Is there anyone here present who wishes to, to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment other than the applicant? Okay. At this time, the council will hear from the applicant again. Uh, uh, Ms. Richards, do you have any comments? you want to come forward again, please? Are there any questions by members of council? Would you like to make a presentation on this property at all, Mr. Richards? Comments? No? Good. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. If there's no question by members of council, this time the proposed uh, meeting with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded, and the motion of council by by Councilor Thompson and second by Councilor Fisher. Any discussion with respect to the motion? Having seen none, all those in favor? The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Members of Council, I have a few comments this evening with respect to some condolences uh, to our City Hall family who've just recently lost loved ones, uh, to the family of the recently deceased uh, Bob Corfield, a former employee of the City for 31 years, and uh, to condolences to his brother, our former Fire Chief, uh, Peter Corfield, and to Mr. Mel Brown, uh, our former uh, manager of building on the recent passing of his wife, Kathy. On a happier note, congratulations go out to our newest grandmother, uh, Mrs. Karen Kidney of the CAO's office, with the recent birth of her grandson, Keegan. I'm happy to uh, join, I was happy to join on the weekend, uh, hundreds of moms and dads and the and children at the Ontario Early Years uh, Family Literacy event held uh, uh, at the McBain Community Center. Uh, Scholastics Canada had arranged for a children's author, uh, Barbara Reed, to attend and to read from her newest book. And judging from the great number of excited children at the event, I would say it was a great and most successful event. Other events this past city weekend, of course, that included the annual stair climb for cancer at the Skyland Tower. I know a number, a number of member councils were there. And a very successful event held by Dr. Don Cor, uh, for Operation Africa, where I was certainly pleased to join others uh, who were there to uh, help him spearhead his effort with, with respect to setting up a library in his hometown in Ghana. And of course, the Super City Walk for MS uh, Research uh, was held on Sunday. I know Councillor Peter Angel attended and uh, was recording uh, registrants uh, early in the morning. I think that was a great event as well. The weather wasn't that cooperative, but it was nice to see a number of people uh, who attended. 
Future events, I'd like to draw to your attention a few events coming up in the near future. Uh, Project Shares Restaurant Ride is this Sunday, April 22nd, and I'll be attending Niagara Days in Toronto next Monday and Tuesday, April 23rd and 24th at Queen's Park. Uh, it's the annual effort that we have a chance to showcase Niagara through the uh, region of Niagara, where we'll have an opportunity to meet with members of, uh, of the government, provincial government, and opposition uh, to express our concerns in a number of different areas. Also, uh, the annual Canadian Cancer Society Daffodil Tea is scheduled for Thursday, April 26th at the Lions Club in, on Portage Road. I believe details are included in your council package this evening. And I would encourage you to consider attending this year's Employee Recognition Night held on, being held on Thursday, April 26th. This event honoring our retirees as well as our 35, 30, and 25 year service employees uh, being held at the Greg Fruin Theatre where, of course, there will be a, a bit of magic and uh, we'll have a great night of uh, evening's activities. I'd like to acknowledge again the efforts of uh, our CAO in acknowledging the uh, expertise and uh, the quality of staff we have and we'll recognize those people further that evening. Thank you very much. Other communications and comments from the clerk? Is there anything further? My pleasure council. Yes, uh, Councillor Carrier. I'd move uh, one and two. Okay, items one and two um, moved by Councillor Carrier, second by Councillor Thompson. Uh, yes, comments? Councillor Thompson? Yeah, on uh, All Saints Church, uh, the request uh, suggests it be referred to uh, staff to come back for the report. I'd like to uh, uh, change that. So this has been attempted for many years to try to uh, uh, have this uh, set aside under the Heritage Act, and uh, here's an opportunity to uh, expedite this as quickly as possible. I'd like to uh, uh, change the motion, if I can, Mr. Macario, to uh, uh, approve the uh, 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 request uh, for under the Heritage Act and uh, ask to be referred to staff to expedite the paperwork with respect to this as quickly as possible. Thank you. Did that meet with your approval, Councilor? Uh, I'm I mean, your words. I've you had many uh, calls from some of the commissioners sure. as well. I thought we had to go through the Heritage Committee, but if we can Good. do it this way, that's and fine. And your Council, I did hear from the Bishop early on. He has made objections from the perspective of the church. Uh, he was hoping they would designate the exterior and allow the interior to be um, uh, to be free from that designation. So uh, I guess that's what the request is at this point, my understanding, if that's correct. Um, are you looking at the entire in and out? Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, that's fine. So if the entire inside and outside of be designated, that's good to qualify. Any other comments from members of council? Council Wayne? Yes, if the uh, bishop does have um, concerns with it, uh, there's always the option of appeal to the Conservation Review Board. We had a matter go to the, con well, almost go to the Conservation Review Board uh, last year. In fact, uh, it was settled. Uh, the objector withdrew their appeal before there was actually a hearing. So this is not new ground for us to cover, knowing that somebody does have some concerns. But there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, designation does not reduce the value of your property. It does not prevent you from being able to sell it. In many cases, it actually raises is the value. We have a grant program in place in the city of Niagara Falls. We recognize the fact that sometimes it costs a little bit more for certain materials, so we do have a grant program to help off, help offset those costs. And, uh, you know, this, you know, I know the first thing I ever heard about LACAC, as the Municipal Heritage Committee used to be called, was back in the 80s. I heard that there was one of some organization in Agron the Lake that dictated what color you painted your house. Not true. Has never been true. In fact, we once had a request here that we designate the paint color for a building. We refused to do it. We didn't want to tie the hands of future owners. So there's an awful lot of misinformation on the side of those objecting to this, and I am really thrilled to see this going forward. I have never seen a petition take off like this one. Jolie Cut, I know we had a couple thousand more signatures, but that was over many, many more months. The community has really responded to this. Call. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Kerrio. Your Worship, just one other comment. Um, they were prepared to bring uh, many more people down to the council chambers tonight, and they had asked me what I thought, and I told them that I thought that this would be fine if there was a representative group of them come, that we didn't need the uh, other 3,000 people to show up for us to believe what they were saying. Sure. Good. Appreciate the comment. Pleasure of council, then. We'll call the vote. All those, any, call all those in favor? Any opposed? One opposed? Thank you. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, now, item number three, the Downtown Board of Management. We do have representatives from the board um, requesting the 2007-2010 Board of Management and the 2007 budget be approved. Pleasure, Council. Councilor Carrier. I move the recommendation, Your Worship. Moved by Councilor Carrier, seconded by Councilor Diodati. Any discussion? 
Question, Councillor Wing. Are we voting on the budget, or are we voting on some other matters? On both well? the board and the budget. Uh, it's, in we, the, it's in the agenda. Can we take them separately? Um, you can. Do you wish to split them? Uh, is that pleasure, Council? We're going to split. Okay. Request so, the council. Yes. Request the council. We'll split that. All those in favor to split it? Uh, okay. We're fine. Okay. Then we'll split the motion. And the motion you have, all the material, refers to. Uh, we'll move it in. The first one, the uh, board of management. Okay. First. Okay, the members of the composition, seconded by Councillor Diada, that was okay. Now discussion with respect to that. Any discussion? Having seen having seen none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Is motion is carried. Mr. Clerk, did you have a concern? No. Nope. Okay. Second part of the motion, we wish up again the uh, the budget be approved. Moved by Councillor Carrio, seconded by Councillor Thompson. Any discussion? Yes, Councillor Mays. I just have one question on here. Uh, I don't see a comparison. I'd just like to know how that compares to uh, last year's budget. Is it comparable? Is it? Uh, in fact, it was 180 last year, and uh, it's 180 this year. It's the same thing. Okay. All righty. Any other discussion? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Are there any other items for uh, Council's consideration, Mr. Clerk? Okay. Ratification of community services, community actions. I'm going to call on Councillor uh, Iononi as chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The following items are to be ratified from tonight's meeting of the Community Services Committee. A, the minutes of the April 2nd, 2007 meetings be approved. Two reports that no, A, that no parking, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. except buses restriction be installed on the west side of Corwin Avenue as outlined in report MW 2007-37. B, that council provide a grant for the charter fees for Niagara Transit bus service for the Stanford Collegiate 150th reunion and allow the use of city parking lots. C, that council approve the sign variance for 6812 Lundy's Lane, uh, the part store store. D, that staff prepare a report on a policy to cover the cost for council with respect to printer supplies. And I still make that motion. Moved by Councillor Ioni, seconded by Councillor Cario. Any discussion with respect to that? Councillor Thompson? Yes, just regarding the one motion, I think I was involved in this, uh, suggesting that, that they check with the region with respect to expenses, not just for printing costs. I think they have several different policies with respect to uh, computers and uh, phones and other things, and I think it's worthwhile looking at. Okay, that's so noted. Is that an amendment to the motion? Um, well, I think that was included, wasn't it? Uh, there will be a staff report. Okay. Be included. That's fine. That will be, be included in the report. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. The call on the city clerk with regard to ratification of in-camera action. The council refer the report on the competitiveness review of the human resources today for its review and report back. Moved by Councilor Peter Angel, seconded by Councilor Cario. Any discussion to that? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Is there, is there anybody who wishes to have any items removed from the dealt with separately? Councilor Cario? I, I move the consent agenda, Your Worship. Okay, moved by Councilor Cario, seconded by Councilor Peter Angelo. Any discussion on the matter? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, the bylaws. Are there any additional bylaws, Mr. Clerk, with respect to the council's consideration this evening? Having seen none, at this point, can I have a motion to introduce the bylaws? The bylaws to give the first reading. Moved by Councilor Peter Angel, second by Councilor Fisher. Uh, you've heard the motion. Uh, any discussion? Yes. I want to be noted as opposed to bylaw 2007 82. It's uh, uh, official plan uh, amendment number 70 uh, regarding the expansion of Walker Brothers Dump. Okay, opposed. That's noted. Uh, so Councillor Wing and Councillor Anoni. Myself, yeah. And Councillor Diodati. Okay. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Bylaws 2007-79 and 2007-84. Right at first time. And a motion to give the bylaws a second and third reading. Okay. Councillor Peter Anzo, seconded by Councillor Maves. Um, Again, any comments or questions? You've heard the motion. Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Bylaws 2007-79 and 2007-84. Okay. Try to second for a time. Thank you. Member of the council, are there any items for new business and considerations this evening? Council Dave Addy? Thank you, Worship. I'll be quick. First, I know I mentioned it once already, but uh, first repeating, we're getting so close. Um, this is the last week. Uh, the next seven days to purchase your tickets for the gala for the Ian Meyer 50th reunion. Um, 
we're in the same situation as Stanford is. We need to have our tickets purchased in advance or we will not uh, be able to allow them in at the door. The casino has strict uh, regulations. You need to buy your tickets in advance. You have one week. Uh, typically, people like to leave things to the last minute, and unfortunately, it's going to create a, a nightmare for us. So we're asking, we're pleading. I know a lot of people out there that are saying they're, they're buying their tickets, they're assembling their, ta their tables. Um, we are asking and reminding you that you have one week. Better they do it now than be disappointed uh, after the fact. Uh, second item is um, I just want to draw attention to the fact that your worship, um, the second annual cancer fun run uh, that's going to be taking place in St. Catharines, uh, Saturday, May the 26th. It's called the Rankin Cancer Run. They did it last year. Um, the nice thing about this run is 100% of the funds for cancer stay right here in the region. They don't leave the area. Uh, last year they had an incredible uh, kickoff. They had 2,500 participants. Uh, they raised uh, $230,000. If you're interested, you just have to go to the website, uh, Rankin, R-A-N-K-I-N, cancerrun.com. Uh, we've all been touched by cancer. Um, there's some interesting articles. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of the participants wearing their orange shirts and ball caps. Uh, showing themselves as cancer survivors and it's a great way it's a fun run you can do 1k 5k whatever it is that you like along the well and canal and and again uh, money stays in the region which is which is great uh, and the last thing I just want to draw attention to the fact that um, I've got a, a number of calls at the end of the winter uh, about people complaining that their cars were parked on the street and they were ticketed and um, um, staff do a good job at trying to educate the public. Unfortunately, uh, the message doesn't always get out there. And I just want to draw attention to the fact that um, if you, for some reason, have company staying at your house and maybe they've had too much to drink, or maybe you're having construction done on your driveway or some unforeseen uh, a tree falls in your driveway and you can't park and you have to leave it out on the street, uh, there is a 365-day bylaw uh, that says you, you're not allowed to park on the street without a permit. Simply what they need to do is call the city service center and ask for parking control. Uh, they ask for 24 hours notice. Obviously, oftentimes, you don't have 24 hours uh, notice. Perhaps, as I said earlier, maybe they were drinking and it's better to, to not drink and drive uh, and park out the street and risk the ticket. But what we would suggest is that you just have to call in. Uh, again, the city service center, ask for parking control, give them the license plate to make uh, of the vehicle, and, uh, and they will uh, have that on the record. So if, in fact, you do get a ticket, you can go back to that department and uh, they will um, nullify that ticket if you did, in fact, call it in. So I just wanted to educate the public. I've got a number of people that were concerned that we are out on witch hunts for cars out on the street, and often it is on a complaints basis. And I did want to let them know if, in fact, you do have a reason to be on the street, call it into the city, and uh, you won't be, uh, you won't receive a ticket, or you won't have to be paying for a ticket. Thank you for bringing Thank the matter you. forward, and Councillor Anony wishes, wishes to address that matter as well. To that point, did we not make a motion asking for a staff report in regards to Niagara on the Lake's ability to buy a parking permit any time? Uh, that's coming in two weeks? Okay, because I did have a, somebody at Shoppers Drug Mart say to me, can I go buy that yet? And I said, no, I thought it was coming up shortly. So coming back to the, the next council meeting? Yes, we hope. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Yes, Councilor Carrion. New item, Your Yes. A new item, just a reminder as well about the Stanford's um, 150th reunion, uh, May 10th, 11th, and 12th. They'd also like most of the tickets or all of the tickets to be purchased prior to April the 20th, Your Worship. They're expecting between three and 5,000 people. So it would be a nightmare if the people didn't purchase their tickets ahead of time, Your Worship. So we appreciate that. We hope they have a great, successful event as well. So great. Um, anything else? If not, the motion to adjourn. The motion to Councilor Peter Angel, seconded by Councilor Mays. All those in favor, motion is carried. Thank you very much.